stant oh. group. It's kind of a, like a bizarre group. Somebody who may come into yes. your church, wear a funny hat, and say, I'm going to get to heaven through a UFO. You're always going to have those people in a church, but the whole body of Christ at that time had clearly established the deity of Christ, yes. the crucifixion being literally, and the resurrection from the dead. Absolutely. It was 316 to 2, in fact. Right. Uh, and, and the only two, uh, one was the, the father of the error right. and his associate, Absolutely. And, and they were simply permitted out of the good graces of the hearts of these Christian leaders mm -hmm. to at least have their say. Right. But then the vote was essentially unanimous. Right. And it was pretty much just a public statement and it was a way to make a referendum so that yes. future generations would know which books they could depend upon That's and which correct. they could not. Of course, Iranian, Iranian Tertullian, early church fathers had to deal with the Gnostics uh, and they, they exposed the Gnostics as blasphemous, as literally worshippers of the serpent, um, as having rituals which were anti-Christ, as the deniers of the crucifixion. So it's not like it was a surprise all of a sudden that there was a huge surge of, of pro-Gnostics that were suddenly thrown out. Uh, they clearly weren't even considered part of the biblical church and so Absolutely. that's why we didn't have going back to this there were virtually no copies really left a few had been extant that we read about in early church writings but most of them had been destroyed because nobody took them seriously but apparently one monk somewhere thought he should rescue them a, a monk in now, Verity, yeah peter isn't that interesting right there is always an intrigue even within established uh christendom we may say and uh there was no basic Catholic established Christendom in those right. days, but right. uh, a monk, an individual, hid those. There, there's always an individual within the cloister of Christendom right. who will get excited about extracurricular activities and extracurricular mm -hmm. concepts right. that are a total variance with established truth, right. yet they get very excited about that and hold very close that which excites them. Uh, this can go in many, many directions. Right. So, uh, before you, oh, this is so exciting, and our generation needs this. So, once again, let's nail it down. 1945, Muhammad Ali, not the fighter, but a man who stirred up quite a fight, <laughs> made a discovery digging for fertilizer right. at uh, Nag Hammadi. Uh, near a monastery, adjacent to a monastery, and this gives the general area uh, close to the Red Sea, but of course south of the Cairo Delta right. area and south of the Sinai area, etc. So that's where the discovery was made in 1945. Right. So the documents were in place, and these decades have gone by, and various scholars who are looking for that excitement outside the mm -hmm. fold mm -hmm. uh, have have now brought to fore these concepts. Actually, what Dan Brown is writing is not new. There have no. been many other books. It's just that the timing, the receptivity is such, it's like when Charles Darwin approached a generation with naturalism. Right. Previously, uh, the books were written uh, avowing uh, a universal flood, avowing uh, recency in the biblical record. Right. Charles Darwin did not bring anything new. Now, this is very important for our audience to know. And these gentlemen, if I may call them gentlemen and ladies, are not bringing anything new to the table. Correct. Charles Darwin stole from ancient Babylonian and Grecian concepts, right. put it into more modern terminology. In fact, he had a compatriot who came up with the same idea of natural selection simultaneously. Mm -hmm. But Charles Darwin put it in a special guise, and there was receptivity because there was a naturalistic groundswell now, we come to this blasphemy regarding Jesus as God the Son and the Son of God, the Gospels as being the four, the message as being settled in the 66 books of the Bible, canonizing the 27 books of the New Testament that had already been canonized previously. Right. This was simply a verification. So there's nothing new. So Dan Brown and others who have written about it but didn't get nearly as much publicity right have reached back to an old concept, the foundations that were already denied by Bible-believing, by truthful researchers, Arrhenius, uh, Tertullian, others, in long centuries past, they wrote these documents in the second, third, and fourth centuries, long after the canon of the Scripture had been closed. Right. Now we find a receptive, naturalistic audience. Peter, isn't it interesting? 
that this receptive naturalistic audience to humanize Christ, as you're going to show us in greater detail momentarily, that this audience is programmed academically by naturalistic evolution. Mm -hmm. It all fits together in a groundswell of rebellion. Right. I will not give an account to God. I will set my throne above, above the stars of God, right. above the throne of God himself. <laughs> I will be like the Most High God. Right, and that's what the Gnostics, of course, the word Gnostic comes from Gnosis, which is the Greek word for knowledge, and they believe that they can, apart from Christ, ascend and become part of God through their own knowledge. And the more intimacy, it's not just intellectual knowledge, but the more intimate knowledge, like in the Old Testament, Adam knew Eve. The more intimate knowledge they have with God, they'll have revelation and visions and literally become Christ's themselves. What's interesting is Satan is reproducing now through this theology in people the same desires that got him thrown out of heaven, yes. which is to be like God. And, and so, actually, as you, uh, Peter, follow with me, you are able to connect the dots uh, in an incredible dimension. As you've connected the dots, throwing this back to the Garden of Eden uh, and Eve, actually there's a sense. Now, John said the world lieth in the lap of the wicked one. Right. And that's forecasting the time that we're now experiencing. I agree. And the Greek there lieth in the lap of the wicked one is not simply sitting there with admiration but is a sensual close proximity right. so we now have a sensualism inferred in the very context of the Gnostics absolutely and as even National Geographic now, uh, these books are, are books of uh, some of these Gnostic Gospels and here's an expose that is correct but we don't want to recommend these books uh, Peter will talk about these momentarily but even as National Geographic wrote a fairly good article describing the Gnostics held to a concept. And then once I mention this, I want you to run with it. Okay. They held to a concept that the material world and the material universe were made by mistake by an inferior God. That's right. And that the human body was inferior. And that Jesus really wanted to be released from that because he had arrived in this so-called semi-sensual fellowship and intimacy with God to the point where he became a Christ, the Gnostic concept is that if we respond in this sensual relationship, bringing in Mary Magdalene, all of it is the warp and woof of the concept as you have connected the dots. As the human individual in his spirit has more fellowship not with the God of the Bible, not with the God of the physical creation that we know that is marred, we will admit, and the Bible describes right. that. It's running down. But instead, a superior God, unnamed, unmentioned, who can only be known by superior hidden knowledge. Right. Therefore, we have all of this cult, and ultimately the God of creation will be wiped out because he didn't do a good job. Exactly. Take it from there, my friend. Well, uh, there's some ironies actually in what you're sharing, um, which hopefully those who are watching will catch on to and realize, as you have perfectly shared it, that there is a contradictory spirit even within Gnosticism. And all the name of this God, who's a twisted God, is the Demiurge. The Demiurge was the creator God, but the reason he was twisted and deformed and created a twisted and deformed world is because his mother, Sophia, which translates wisdom, who was the consort to a great true God who pretty much stays out of the picture. He's like a dad who never shows up, but, you know, never comes uh, home. But there was, a, there was a true God. There is Sophia, the wife of the consort, which, of course, you see in Asherah, you see in Babylon, you see through all the Ashtra, you see in Akkadian and, and uh, all the ancient cults. But you have here, the birth of this son didn't come from the true God mating with Sophia. Sophia, pretty much as an independent woman, reminds you of Helen Redding, I am woman, hear me roar. Well, she went off on a cloud basically by herself, concentrated real hard, and self-birthed. 
Now, the reason virgin that's... Virgin concept. Right. Virgin concept, number one. Number two, it's an androgynous, almost a her hermaphroditic con concept. Where, and this androgyny is something that's very popular today. If you look at the movies, Brokeback Mountain and all these other perverse movies, there's pretty much an androgyny, a promotion that sexuality does not have an order. And so I believe a lot of that influence is coming from that. But anyway, she self-birthed, and I'll share with the irony here is, <clears throat> she self-birthed this demurge. The demurge then created being twisted because self-birthing, he didn't come out well. He created then an imperfect world that didn't come out well. And I'll show you how they kind of uh, reverse engineered that theology. But what's <coughs> ironic is, what do they teach? They teach that you don't need Christ but you can separate from Christ, self-birth, your own Godhead. And I thought, you know what? Why don't they study their own theology? The way the demurge got created was by self-birthing without God's intervention, the Father's intervention. But yet here they're creating their own salvation by self-birthing from the spark within to become God's. And I thought, why didn't one of them sit down and say, hey, you know what? We're having a theology for ourselves. It's kind of like, you know, our super mama there messed up with self-birthing. Maybe we need to have...